attention, everybody. I'm about to make a movie. I'm about to gather up all of these hoes. Juice and made me a smoothie. You ain't never seen a nigga like. Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel, Eddie Jerrell Jones with an X on the end. Now today I'm coming to y'all with a video that I really feel like in my heart I wanna do. Mainly because I need to wash my hair. I just took my braids out. I had like box braids in since July 5th. I got them done July 5th and 6th. It's a two day process. Oh, see the detangling needs to happen. <laughs> yes, girl. And excuse my two broke nails, like charge into the game, period. So it's been about three and a half months, no wash, no heat, no nothing. It's been in a uh, protective style. Those that know what box braids do for your soul and your scalp, y'all know what's going on. Feel free to like, you know, critique me. Let me know what products are like best for natural hair. I definitely have 4C hair. It's just, you know, regular black person, people hair. You know what we working, what we rocking with. This is the creme de la mother creme up here. And also shrinkage is real. My hair shrunk so much. I took my braids out yesterday and my hair has already shrunk so much. Um, I slept on it and everything. So y'all can only imagine the detangling that I have to do. But let's just go through the products I'm gonna use today. And then we're just gonna start chatting it the fuck up. I've been using Cream of Nature Argan Oil Shampoo. I've always been a fan of Argan Oil. Also have the corresponding conditioner. Get into it. I'm gonna let my hair sit with the conditioner on for a little while and you know, we're gonna chit chat, we're gonna talk. When I go to blow it out, I'm gonna use this Cream of Nature. I actually just got this from the hair store. This Cream of Nature um, heat protector. It's a clear bottle, so you're just not gonna be able to read through it because I can barely read it right here. But it's a heat corrector, smooth and shine polisher. But now I'm about to get that same comb. Yes, God. My hair is like damp. So I'm about to like part it and use these little hair ties to separate my hair so I can go ahead and set this conditioner in and get a deep conditioning. I am coming to y'all today to speak on the non-binary narrative from my perspective. From my perspective. Within that, we're gonna be testing out this detangler brush. So first, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna just part my hair while I talk to y'all. I'm non-binary. That is an umbrella term for gender non-conforming, uh, gender neutral. Whenever I feel inclined or I've been compensated to explain what being non-binary is and you know, basically a, just a soft definition, a non-politically correct definition. This is not going to be your Webster definition. This is gonna be my life experience. Well, let me stop cursing so I can make sure that the kitties can watch this. This is my life experience. I am non-binary. I've always been non-binary. Um, the world finally put some amazing terms out there that we could use to identify ourselves, even though we don't want to be identified or labeled, but we'll get into that. I've always known and wanted to be somewhat a girl or to be feminine, but let's break that down. When I was younger, I basically was like your typical black gay kid, grew up in the black suburbs, and really just wanted to be nothing but feminine. Like, just growing up, honestly, I just wanted to be, I wanted to do what girls did, because I don't wanna, I don't wanna mix people up, and I don't wanna try to get so hung up on me using the word girl, but I'm using that because when I grew up, that's all I knew. Girl, boy, boy, girl, that's it. You, you one or the other. So I always knew that I at least didn't necessarily want to be a girl because I'm a very vocal person. So I probably would have been saying stuff like that to my mom. Like, mm, I want to be a girl, I want to be a girl. But as far as my knowledge, I never really said anything like that. I more so just wanted to be feminine and do a lot of feminine things, which there, no there's nothing wrong with that. Now that I know, growing up black and gay, that's already a huge no-no. I was born in 1994, so I grew up in the 90s and early 2000s. Growing up in Cleveland, Ohio, I just knew that I was feminine. 
I knew I wanted to do girly things, not necessarily be a girl or anything. My sister is 15 years older than me, so basically I grew up as the only child in my household. So basically like, as soon as I was a latchkey kid, I was coming home, being home by myself during the summer after school. I was playing at my mom's heels. I was putting on her clothes. I was making my own clothes. I was like making my own uh, high heel shoes out of like the old plastic folders that were like mad durable, duct tape and batteries. I had strapped heels. I had, only thing I couldn't make was a boot, but one day we'll get there. All right. So once I got into high school, I was like, you know what? I just, I don't want to be the gay kid. There were a few out uh, kids at my school, like at my high school, went to Warrensville Heights. But, um, you know, I really just didn't connect with any of them. I don't really know why I didn't. Later on in life, I have. But um, I just wasn't really comfortable with myself. So that is, you know, that's the way that goes. Everybody gets comfortable with themselves at a different stage. Oh, I'm supposed to be using a detangler thing. See, I'm such a baby girl. I'm like, I don't wanna. Let's see. Oh, she's over. She's over. Look at that. She's fab. She's fab. I like this brush. So basically, once I got in high school, I decided that I was gonna run track and field because I'm like, this is another non-contact sport. At this point, I had made um, friends with my best friends that I'm still best friends with today. All girls, they were already friends before we met. I kind of just slid on in there, you know? They were all like cheerleaders popular, you know? They were the girl that I, that I knew that I should be, but necessarily just, you know, I'm not a girl, so I'm gonna be friends with these girls because they're fab. So, only thing about doing your hair is your arms get tired so fast. As I'm running track, I kind of flow through all four years of my high school. No real dating, no relationships, um, lots of crushes, but never acted on any of them. I also had like a cover up relationship in high school, which, um, which is really unfair to people. So graduated from high school, Again, no real dating, just kind of went through puberty by myself, mind of my business. And let's talk about it. When I ran track, as I'm like in the weight room, I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna try to get big, I'm gonna try to get sexy. You know, I was already lean, so I'm like, all I gotta do is, you know, just build muscle. Like, girl, just build you some muscle. Never built the muscle. My body just honestly, it wasn't, it wasn't me. My body couldn't grasp the concept, let's be real. I never got bigger, I never got chiseled, I just got lean. I just got more lean, more lean, more lean, and more lean to the point where it was like, oh my God, I'm like 0% body fat. I'm just like this rock hard stick, which I mean, I'm not mad at, but I never got bigger. So we'll just, just remember that. My body never got like more masculine and never got bulky. It literally, I've never not been this size and I'm not saying that to be like, shady or anything i'm just trying to really let y'all know my body is not going to bulk up that's not what my frame was i wasn't born for that so i've accepted it i had to accept it it was very hard to accept that being around all of those boys in high school it was very hard to accept that like mm. I'm just a skinny boy. I'm already insecure because of my sexuality and my gender identity that I don't even know how to express or come to terms with. And I can't even make myself blend in. Like I can't even make myself just look like a boy in high school, an athlete in high school. So I'm dealing with all of that, you know, going home with all of that every day. Um, there were a few periods in my childhood before I got to high school that I did go through um, therapy and I mean, looking back on it, thank freaking God, because who knows where I would have been if I maybe didn't learn some of the practices and expressing my feelings at least. But I think therapy really taught me that communication is like the most important thing. And it's like communicating your feelings is very important if you want people to like understand you. I got very good with communicating my feelings, whether I did it positively or negatively. And a lot of times it kind of came out in anger by the time. I was like 12, I learned how to express my anger and my mean, nasty words very, very quickly. Now let's not act like every teenager doesn't go through their own shit. In reality, my shit was way deep. Cause I thought I was going to hell for being gay. Then it's like, bitch, 
is it just gay? Like, am I a girl? Do I want to be a girl? Because at that age, all I knew was just, you know, it was either you were a, a man, woman, or you were a trans man or trans woman. So I really, you know, I didn't really know, like, what, like, what are my options? Like, what are my options? Because I just feel like shit. This is the child. This is the child me thinking. That's where I was in high school, you know, trying to deal with my non-binaryness without the word gag. Get into that. Let's fast forward. I graduate from high school, still haven't come out to any family or friends, and I go off to college, to Lincoln University. Now, those of you all who have been watching me for a while, y'all already know what the college vlogs gave. I was very, very, very active in college. I went to college and probably we started in like the end of August, probably by like the third week of September. I said, you know what? I'm going to be myself. And I started, you know, just being more me. And I don't want to use the word flamboyant, but I would definitely use the word feminine. I started to express my, my natural feminine traits a lot more. Um, in the way I walked, talked, stood, I just did whatever felt comfortable to me. Not... What can I do to make people not look at me? I, I stopped thinking that a long time ago. I'm developing friendships in college, real like, real friendships. I ended up coming out to my best friends back home. I ended up coming out to my family over that Thanksgiving break. But you know, I just came out as, you know, gay. Cause that's really still all I had explored. <laughs> Cause I, I started exploring. Um, that was really all that I had explored. So let's fast forward to like my junior year, like soft, end of sophomore, beginning of junior year. And no, 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 junior year, because I had a super senior year. So um, junior year, I did a modeling competition that I had to wear makeup in and I had to get my face beat. And I loved it. Just let me show y'all this brush just one more time. It just, it just does stuff. Thanks, girl. It goes straight through the hair. Once I got my makeup done, I loved it. I started getting on YouTube. I learned how to beat my mug. And I started wearing makeup, like, full face glam. Like, all the time, whenever I felt like it. Completely glammed up. On campus, off campus. Mind you, I'm a black boy doing his makeup on a historically black university, college, or campus. <sighs> um, I was scared shitless, but everybody at my school, did they treated me like regular. They didn't treat me crazy. And I know that it's because my personality is very out there. Hence the reason you're watching this today. Um, my personality is very out there and people connect with my personality and people like to laugh. So, you know, they not put up with me, but at times I felt like I was um, tolerated. But, you know, when you're just coming out, sometimes being tolerated is, is, is just enough to keep you going through the next day. Like, you know, the world doesn't hate me gag fast forward to 2020 the world hates me see how much work this is you know like yeah i started expressing you know my femininity i started exploring um makeup which led to me exploring hair which led to me exploring heels and i started to kind of develop as myself i i, I started to like develop the same way a teenage girl or boy should be developing in high school figuring out what looks work for them figuring out you know, how they like to wear their hair, what eyeliners they like, what their favorite mascaras, or, you know, their favorite tennis shoe brands or heel brands, or like, what style jeans do they like to wear that they feel like works for their, you know, aesthetic or whatever. I didn't really get those opportunities in high school because I just wore what I thought I was supposed to wear. Once I kind of tackled that barrier that I had put up and, and never really explored, I began to become extremely happy and I decided that I was not going back to the old me and I was going to live my life as authentically as possible and that became my mantra, unapologetic as fuck. I graduate college, I walk across the stage full beat, my mug was the fuck on and it was great. That footage is on my channel as well. Um, and I just continued to develop. Now let's fast forward. I moved to New York City two years after I graduated. Um, no, why would I lie? I moved to New York City 
a year after I graduated from college. And I worked at Fox 29 Philadelphia for a little bit after college. They accepted me for who I was. I wore makeup on the job. They loved it. They put me on TV multiple times. It was like great. And it wasn't for makeup. It was for regular field reporting. But my face was beat for TV. But still, I'm a boy beat for TV. So I know the world was gagging. But they didn't care. And we were in Philly. And they were giving. We gave you the mic, you go do your job. So that's what I was doing, having a great time. Moved out to New York City. I got involved in ballroom. And then that is when I fucking saw the opportunities. <gasps> oh, that I could be. Darling. Within that, when I moved to New York, I did a lot of like advocating work. I still do a lot of advocating work in the LGBT community. I began to educate myself with uh, gender studies. Now I took gender studies, gender and media studies in, in college, but I wanted to really, I wanted the real deal gender studies. Like basically from there, I began to openly identify as non-binary because I was, I was then grown, had my own apartment, my own bills, and the world is going to treat me the way I see fit. And if I say that these are my pronouns, or if I say that this is how I identify, so don't call me this, or don't treat me like that, then that is what I mean, and that is what I said. And as a grown adult, as a tax-paying and bill-paying adult, I can, I can um, say those things and do those things and be treated accordingly. Made a lot of friends that, you know, um, are can relate to my life experience and are uh, currently identifying as non-binary and gender non-conforming and gender neutral or androgynous. And I love that. I love that for each one of them because basically when you, when you say that I'm non-binary or I'm gender non-conforming, you're not signing up for another label. You're literally just using a word to let people know, don't. Don't box me in. What you see is not what you're going to always get. Period. On the last part, y'all. We on the last part. When I explain what being non-binary is to me, I like to use analogies. It's like a shower, spigot, or faucet or whatever. So you have black and you have white. You have all of this gray area. So I like to just call it gender on a spectrum because we can just call that a spectrum. You're on one end of the spectrum or you're on the other end of the spectrum or you're somewhere in between. Now, I'm not binary, so I, I float between the two, but I mainly stay closer to just being completely feminine. That's just the path nature chose for me. And I'm done trying to fight it. But there are some people that, you know, they are just always somewhere in between and you know, their, their gender on the spectrum doesn't move. They're just in between and that's them. You have some people that are shapeshifters like me that float between, you know, the mass side of things and the more feminine side of things. I don't often travel to the mass side but i'll share like this like changing my hair can sometimes throw me into a i'll say like a gender mood where it's like i'm feeling more um like i don't want to communicate as much i'm feeling like i want to be more in control of things i feel more insecure um like when i took my braids out yesterday i just felt like i just felt like hair changes my look so much and I felt like when I took my hair out I literally felt like I went from looking like somebody's auntie to somebody's uncle and it was like a huge whoo whoa to me because it's like since I do embrace my masculine and feminine um sides I sometimes get a little skirt when I see the masculine side because I ain't seen him in a minute and you know, I haven't talked to him in a minute and see and, and, and seen how he feels and see if he feels suppressed or see if he's happy just chilling. And I will honestly say that like taking my hair out today and waking up and still looking exactly the same and not feeling too different, he's fine. Like he's fine. The masculine side of me doesn't have that much energy. <laughs> like he really doesn't. My arms are so tired. Like, he doesn't like doing stuff like this. But every once in a while, it's nice to come and just, you know, fill yourself a little bit. Um, so I've been, you know, playing in the masculine side of things in, like, the past week or so. Um, which I find to be a great exercise. 
and I know that there are other people out there and I'm sure that there are people in your life that you you may have seen these changes and not exactly know like how to how to navigate them or how to deal with that person during that and it's really just treat them like a human freaking being that's that's the best advice I got treat somebody that is non-binary gender non conforming like a human being yeah just be you bitch just be you but so i have like 30 more minutes and then i will come back on here when i have my hair rinsed out and i am blowing it out and then once we blow it out girl oh hey y'all so i'm back with another towel on my head oh the shrinkage is real ah. <laughs> So, we are officially blown out. Wash, no, we're officially detangled from the braids. Washed, conditioned, detangled, deep conditioned. Chilled out for a little while. Chatted, rinsed out, and blown out. And now, we part ways. Yeah, thank you all so much. It's been real, and it's been fun. <laughs> but it ain't been real fun. <laughs> so, as I, as I finish living my 70s fantasy right now, um, I hope you all have a great day. I hope you all enjoyed the chit chat. And do this. See you on my next video.